Today, we're taking over the San Diego Padres following their elimination from the postseason. And it was a little bit of a sour ending going over 20 innings without scoring a run against the Dodgers. But I'm looking at this team, there's still plenty of talent on the pitching staff and also the lineup where I definitely see them competing for the future. That's where I come in. I'm going to get them over that final hurdle. Let's go win them a World Series. And looking at this lineup, like I said, plenty of talent. All right, so you've got Tatis, Machado, Bogarts, Jackson Merrill. What a way to announce yourself to the major leagues. Campusano, definitely. Definitely a question mark. He wasn't even really the catcher at the end of the season. There was Elias Diaz and Higashioka. Jake Cronenworth's fine at first base. He's like nothing too crazy, but he's suitable. And then Hassan Kim, I know an injury was the main issue that kept him out this year, but he's he's a pretty solid shortstop for sure. Pitching rotation, Dylan Cease, Michael King at the top. Those are great. Dylan Cease is an ace. Michael King is a very consistent pitcher. With Waldron as a knuckleballer, you, you're going to have to expect some good days. And then there's also going to be those bad days too. You Darvish had that personal matter that kept him out for a big chunk of the season. But when you Darvish is you Darvish, one of the best pitchers in baseball. And this one might be the big like blemish on the Padres right now. It's Joe Musgrove. The guy just can't stay healthy. And the bullpen is, is solid. You know, Matsui, Morejon, Adam, Estrada, Tanner Scott, Robert Suarez. There's a lot of good arms in that bullpen. And you can't forget about the farm system talent. The top three prospects are Cash Mayfield, who is this year's top pick for the Padres, a big lefty. Ethan Salas, a lot of hype around him. Super young though, so there's still a lot of time to develop him at the catcher position. And then another very young prospect in Leo Dallas DeBrat. Those are the top three Padres prospects. Whew. That was the third time I had to say that tongue twister big thing here big offseason question what to do with Jerickson Profar currently we don't have him on the roster but I do have a contract offered to him 11 mil over two years so it's five and a half mil each season so he would slide in right here at left field which would fill out the roster our bench though pretty empty so I definitely need to bring back some guys or at least find somebody in free agency to fill up those spots and I would like to at least add something to the rotation because I definitely expect some regression from Waldron I definitely expect some regression from Darvish that's an issue and another big issue is we don't have a lot of money the Machado like I mean look at those contracts right there Machado Bogarts Musgrove Darvish Tatis Cronenworth is making over 11 mil Suarez at nine Yuki Mitsui uh, Yuki Matsui, there we go. And then I didn't even know Wandy Peralta got a four year deal. When did that happen? So, with that in mind, I'm going to try to get some money off the books so I can make some free agency signings, but I'm also going to make some trades to improve the team. And the first trade I'm going to go and do is for Luis Robert Jr., super team friendly contract up until 2027. He can fill every outfield position, still only 27 years old. So, even if we get Profar, We'll still have him for the future. He can replace Profar. He can play the outfield over Profar, who can then move to the DH spot. This just, I just think he needs to get out of the south side and really show his talents somewhere else. Let's get Robert in a Padres uni. And the only way that the White Sox will let this deal go through without trading like Ethan Salas or DeVry is with Joe Musgrove. So at 32 years old, in real life, the constant injuries are an issue. But also, I want to get rid of this contract. Robert is like half the price. Let's make this deal. And a player that I drafted in this this season's draft before we actually start the first year is Larry Kubik. So I'm going to trade him as well. And that basically gets the deal done along with Cole Cummins. There we go. And speaking of the draft, let me show you the players that we've got. We've got Reese Priest, C potential, 72 overall. I'm thinking of making him a reliever just because then I think he won't decline in overall i think he'll just be able to develop a little bit more plus it'll lower his overall so i think we'll be good there in the fifth round we've got catcher ramon alfonso there's that fourth round we got charles floyd actually could be usable in a couple seasons domingo tapia was in the fourth fourth round is that where we're at now third round domingo tapia was the third round again looks pretty similar to floyd to be honest so there we go. We had like eight draft picks. So Martin Villanueva was another pick that we had. He can play catcher. I'm not going to put him there though, but B potential, not bad. Devin Lucero was why I was okay moving Kubik because the hitting's there. He was a little bit better of a fielder and the speed was basically the same as Kubik. And this was our first round pick. Gray Eaton can play all across the outfield, even though he's probably more of a left fielder. Good speed, good hitting stats. 
it's the typical MLB The Show draft pick build. So I've made some offers. I'm currently at 87 mil in pending offers, budget 98 mil. So I've do got a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm gonna leave it here. Let's get into the first season. Let's go see how we improve this team. So to start the season, before we even talk about the lineup and everything, I'm gonna acquire Ryan Noda of the Athletics. It's nothing crazy. I just need a lefty off the bench and he's a lefty off the bench. I wanna get rid of Wandy Peralta's contract too. And then I'm throwing in two pitchers that I don't see us using in Vasquez and Eichelberger. So there we go. Alrighty, let's get through this first season. I was doing some digging. So the Padres have Profar, Tanner Scott as free agents. And also I didn't realize that Hassan Kim's contract had a player option for this off season. So he's currently injured with the shoulder issue. I think it's a torn labrum. So he's gonna miss the start of the season or at least like the spring training, maybe like the first couple series of the season. So the Padres are in a tough spot because like, are they willing to pay him a new contract? Is he gonna be okay with taking maybe like a one year deal to show that he's still healthy and he can play? And shortstop could be an issue for the Padres in real life. Obviously with this, you know, he has a one year contract still in the team. So I'm just gonna play it out like, okay, this is the final year of his contract. And then even though I have arbitration, what I'm gonna do is that I'm either gonna try to sign him to an extension or he'll hit free agency. So in real life, it'll be interesting because shortstop in free agency this year is a pretty weak class outside of Adamas and Kim. And the Padres don't really have anybody else that could play shortstop. Like they do have Machado, they do have Bogarts. I guess they could try to move Merrill back there. They could try to move Tatis back there. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what happens in real life. But for this, let's talk about the team. Obviously we got rid of Musgrove, another position that they're gonna have to fill in real life and this is the squad so we got rid of busgrove we added severino and bueller bueller three years 10 mil we weakened the dodgers we brought in bueller severino we took him from the mets seven and a half mil for two seasons with the club option on the second year and for 331 era or for a pitcher who had a 331 era i'm pretty happy paying seven and a half mil the rest of the team looks decent dylan cease was another big offseason move and you're probably thinking what do you mean I extended his contract. I wanted to keep him here for the rest of the rebuild. And I thought that him at the top of the rotation just made too much sense. You Darvish is the one I'm a little bit worried about. And because of that, I decided to sign Soroka and Montas on one year deals just to have that depth in the farm system if need be. This is our bullpen. We've got Tanner Scott back on a one year deal for Mill. And then Suarez still our closer. Lineup wise, obviously we got Robert and then Elias Diaz and Higashioka are going to be our catcher duo with Campusano in AAA. Profar came back on a two-year deal. Noda through the trade, Rosario and Eggy Rosario both manning the infield. So the team's basically the same. I'm liking it. I feel pretty good about this squad. Here are our top prospects. So we've got Leodalis de Vry, Ethan Salas. Devin Lucero, which was a guy that I drafted, and then Cash Mayfield, Martin Villanueva. So we've got basically the guys that I drafted, Gray Eaton, Charles Floyd, Tapia, Alfonso, Reese Priest, who I've made a reliever now, and then a couple guys that I've either signed to fill out the roster, things like that. In terms of top 100 prospects, this was like the biggest pick in the draft. He has like 97, 98 potential. He looks absolutely insane. This is another one that has really high potential. Where is he? This one. He also has like 95 potential for the Reds. These were like the two main picks of the draft. Outside of that, I'm feeling pretty good about the team. Obviously, we have our prospects. We have our MLB team that currently ranks fifth. Let's go through the year. All right. So just after the deadline in the first season, yes, we're in this. We're still in the first season. Really quickly, let's talk about an extension. And it was for our shortstop, Hassan Kim. 13.7 mil for the next three years. I'm okay with that. He'll be 32 at the end of it. That takes us until the fifth season of the rebuild. It'll be fine. Looking at the numbers, they aren't great. Like the average is kind of close. The slugging has definitely dropped from last year, but that, that base percentage is still okay. So I'm okay with that. He's slightly progressing too. So for the next three years, 13 mil really isn't the worst. It's basically 14 mil, but shortstop as a whole is usually a weak position in free agency anyways. So I figured let's lock him up, keep him at the shortstop position. And then quickly draft pick wise, it was a pretty weak draft pick, uh, draft class. You can see because I actually drafted relievers for once, like that doesn't ever happen, but 
with where my pick was, I just really couldn't get a lot of good position players or even pitchers. It wasn't really that strong. Um, the two guys that I really wanted from this draft went to the Rays like 10 picks before us in Fernando Aquino, the catcher looks decent. And then the Mariners were a few picks before us and they took John Gibbons. But outside of that, it was a lot of high potential relievers. And then there were also a lot of high potential like starting pitchers that just ended up getting chosen before me. So the season's over and I might be blocking it. Hope I'm not, but we're taking on the Braves in the wild card. Our season cooled off so much in the second half. We were only like three, four, five games behind the Dodgers in at the beginning of August. And it just... The Dodgers stayed hot and we didn't. We ended up 20 games almost behind them. And then um, obviously a few games ahead in the wild card, but still not great. Awards, we had plenty of gold gloves. Luis Arise at second base is a complete lie because he didn't play second base for us. So there's that. But anyway, Ozuna won MVP along with Aaron Judge, McClanahan and Otani were the Cy Young winners. Will Smith and Alvarez, you're Don Alvarez, okay. I mean, he usually wins the batting title. I'm a little bit more surprised with Will Smith. Keegan Thompson winning back-to-back -back relievers of the year is crazy to me. Eniel De Los Santos with the Yankees, one reliever of the year. And then Xavier Isaac, along with Henry Villegas, was rookie of the year. Probably going to be his only year in the majors based off of that. So let's take a look at our team. So you Darvish, I, I just can't put him in the playoff roster, which is super disappointing. I guess I could put him in over Soroka, but you can see he's down to a 66. The season wasn't wasn't great, right? Like it's it's really tough to see. So maybe we could have him as like a coach in the dugout instead, but right now just doesn't look fantastic. Frankie Montas also came up in September and was shelled. So he's probably not coming back. He's probably not coming back. Outside of that though, Michael King is going to be our long reliever moved out of the rotation. He wasn't bad. He wasn't great, though. He wasn't great. Soroka had no MLB time this year. Yuki Matsui pitched 40 innings almost, was unbelievable. Tanner Scott was the setup guy. He wasn't bad. ERA went up a little bit, but not bad at all. Estrada B potential now. Pretty solid season. Moria Hone, pretty similar to what he did last year. Not upset by it. Jason Adam is now our new setup guy just based on the season that he had. He was unbelievable. And then Robert Suarez, who does still have a couple years left on his deal, was pretty good as a closer. So I'm not going to hate on him. Dylan Cease was our ace. Obviously, we gave him that big contract this year. Still performed like an ace. Walker Bueller, I'll take that all day. All day. Luis Severino, also fantastic. We paid him seven and a half mil. He gave us over 200 innings of 3-4 ERA in baseball. Yes, please. And then Waldron's going to take over that fourth spot of the rotation, which we'll see how that plays out for the postseason. Offensively, Profar didn't really develop or regress at all. We have another year on the contract for five and a half mil. Basically came in versus lefties or was our main bat off the bench and was very good. I'll take that all day. Higashioka, we signed him as our backup catcher. He's fine. I'll take those numbers. Noda, good on base percentage. I wasn't expecting him to be like Barry Bonds or anything. Just come off the bench, help us out. He did that. Ahmed Rosario was just a bench bat. He he did fine. And then Aggie Rosario or Egi, I think it's Aggie. E guy. I mean, I I think it's Aggie. Either way, Rosario. Aren't they brothers? I think these two are brothers. I think they are. No, they aren't. There's a Cubs prospect that's his brother. There's a Cubs prospect that is uh, Rosario's brother. Not Ahmed Rosario. Eggy. Anyways, Eggy. Oh, Jesus. I, I got to look up how to say it now. It is Eggy. All right. Either way, we're past the whole who's related to who, how to pronounce names part of the video. Arise was fine. He's a little bit worse than last year, but what is he a free agent this year? Ooh, I could have. I could have offered him an extension, huh? So I'm going to see if I can bring him back. Maybe. I just, I, is it really worth it? His, his, oh, his on base percentage dropped. We'll see. We'll see. Tatis up to a 99, so I really hope we don't see some regression. Good season, though. Love to see that. Robert, I, I need a little bit better from him. Machado was good. Love to see that is still somehow improving, which is good, which is good. Bogarts was trash. And for 25 mil, I might have to get rid of him. I, I might have to get rid of him because this is not good. Jackson Merrill was unbelievable. Elias Diaz, for the one season that we like properly used him, was fantastic. Cronenworth now has B potential. He had a great year with 31 home runs. Huh? What happened there? And then Hassan Kim, 
good on base percentage, 240 average. It's fine. Again, we extended that contract, so we'll see how it goes. Postseason time against the Braves. We lost the first one, three to four. Won the second one, and then got absolutely shelled in the third game. So, not an ideal first season. The Phillies defeat the Orioles, but you know what? I feel okay. I feel okay. Definitely need some pitching help. Darvish retired. Okay, so he he saw what happened with the team. He's like, I'm out. I've had enough. So a lot of impending free agents. Realistically, I don't have a lot of money. As you can see, the budget is at 73 mil. Oh man, this is oh this is a little bit less, a little bit less than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, I mean realistically, I think I think I gotta get rid of Bogarts now. So our two offers are Arise and Soroka. We've already picked up the option for Severino, and now I need to trade Bogarts. All right, he's going to the Marlins. I I, I can't get anything for him. It, I, literally nothing. I mean, I'm literally getting a 53 overall pitcher. That's literally the only thing I can trade for. Once I hit 57, not possible. So we're getting a 53 overall pitcher. Goodbye, Xander Bogarts. All right, so just really quickly, definitely need at least two starters. Could potentially move Soroka to the fifth spot in the rotation. We do have a couple starters that are like close, but still not there just yet. Relief pitching could use maybe an arm or two. Just kind of looking at the squad. We, we definitely need to at least kind of inf reinforce it a little bit, have that depth. Lineup wise, Arise didn't take the contract. So we'll see if he does in the long run or, you know, in the end, if he takes it. But if not, we can move Profar to the DH bot. Campusano is either going to be the backup or the starter. And then that leaves open second base which again i could do a platoon because eggy rosario hits lefties extremely well i can just find someone that hits righties extremely well rock the platoon there and i think we'll be fine so realistically probably shouldn't spend too much money we do have around 100 mil now we should be fine all right so after the trade right i'm looking at this pitching rotation going this is probably the area i want to improve the most the issue is free agency doesn't look great like blake snell don't really see a reunion on the cards ranger suarez kind of like whatever plus we just did a phillies rebuild gallon chris sale eh. michael king probably and a person we could bring back two years isn't the worst and then just looking at the other options like i, I don't know I, I just don't feel like they they're a padre you know what i mean it just doesn't really fit i was looking at the trade block brian bayo is like kind of interesting just because he's 26 b potential like in real life he did kind of struggle this year does have that contract which is fa fairly team friendly like he hasn't been amazing do i take the chance like ah, let me let me see if there's like am I, you know what it, you know what we're, we're making this deal all right so brian bayo is gonna be a, a padre fairly cheap deal it's gonna cost me ramon Al alfonso which is like the the big piece here a potential we drafted him this last draft the draft before either way tierso ornelas and reese is also getting traded to boston there's a new pitcher Alrighty, so we're starting second season. I've simmed a couple days just because I wanted to get everybody off waivers, get every lineup set, and that way I could just fly through the whole season without having to worry about setting a lineup, or this guy's on waivers, that guy's on waivers, this lineup's wrong. Here we go. Only addition in the bullpen was Jorge Lopez. He pitched with the Cubs for 10 innings over the last two years. I got him for 1.6 mil. If he does well, great. If he doesn't, we do have a couple other arms in the farm system that I feel comfortable calling up. So for under two mil, I thought it was worth the risk. Obviously, Brian Bayo is going to be our five. And then that means Michael King came back. He took forever to decide where he wanted to go. It was like asking my wife where she, what she wanted for dinner. It literally was just me waiting and waiting and waiting for a decision. But in the end, he's back with the Padres. Two years, it was 15 mil on average. I had to bump up my offer. It was originally like 13 mil, had to give it 15. And then the second year's a club option. So let's see how he does. It was like us, the Nationals, and I think like the Cubs were the other team that was interested. I, I don't remember the third team, but for some reason he just wouldn't decide. And he finally did in like the end of January. So we finally got a the pitcher that we were looking for lineup wise really quickly had to sign two guys out of free agency because i didn't realize that i was so thin at a couple positions so urias and ref schneider last minute additions this is the team though i let luis arise go and i don't know where he went but the reason i let him go was because i was looking at his war it was one it was one that was it he gave me one war 
Jerickson Profar was a bench bat for us, and he gave me 0.8, I believe it was. Let me take a look really quickly. Yeah, 0.8. I think Jerickson Profar was like 1.5, 1, something like that. And I was like, let's let's just go for Bo Bichette instead. It's a little bit more money. I think it was 2 mil more. But if you're just looking at the numbers that Bichette was putting up, it was way better. His war was 3.1 compared to Luisa Rice 1.6 maybe. So we ended up going to the White Sox for how much? About okay, so it was like a three mil difference. And let's let's take a look really quickly. What was the war? 1.6. Yeah. And obviously war is not everything. Bobachet and Arise are the same age, but I just figured, is Arise really offering me much more besides just a single? No. So we're gonna rock with this. And then Jose Trevino is our catcher. I didn't feel great about this one. It's just catchers are so hard to get in free agency. I'm not really sold on Campusano, so I picked them up on a two-year team option. We'll see what happens. I'm going to be honest, I don't feel great about this team. I feel like we're actually worse than last year. So even though we're ranked first, let's let's see how we do. Really quickly, I'll show you the top prospects in our organization, just so you can get a quick peek at how everything's looking. Ethan Salas might be called up, depending on how the catcher situation goes, but there's a couple decent looking prospects that I'm like, you know what, they could probably help us out too. So I'm keeping my eye on them. Hopefully they develop. I didn't realize that Gray Eaton was 24 already. He realistically could have been called up this year to help us out off the bench. Because that's really what he's probably going to be, a bench bat. And same thing with maybe James Chin. Maybe he takes over for Bichette at second base here in a season or two. Lucero looks like he could be a good bench bat for us. And then, like I said, Salas probably getting called up fairly soon. All right, draft time. As you can see, our signing day. You can see who I went with. Frank Roche. And the only reason I went with him was because the guy that I wanted went to the Red Sox at pick number 13. As you can see, we have pick number 21. The guy that I wanted, center fielder, he was ranked 27th in the draft class. Our scouts had him as a top five pick. So let's let's quickly see how we did, which it looks great, right? Like the last pick, I'm not too worried about only 76 potential. I can make him a reliever. He'll have more room to grow. Monty John wasn't expecting much from him. I, I figured he'd have high potential, but low overall. 61 overall for Rafael Dominguez is pretty good with A potential. I'll take that. Okay fielding, okay reactions, okay speed. Morero, A potential, looks fantastic as well. Tejada, okay, that's fine. Roche, okay, that's that's fine too. Overall, I'm 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 fine with it, right? Like it's it's not a terrible draft class. But really quickly. Let's see here. I think, I think that's it in terms of, okay. So this was actually the number one rated player in the draft. And I think he went somewhere like late, late single digits, maybe like eight, nine, maybe 10th in the draft class to the Rockies. Anybody else? Some high potential players in this class. Holy cow. I was not expecting that. All right. So obviously we're, go we're going to the Red Sox, right? That's, that's what I'm looking for here in the Red Sox. I'm just seeing if there's any other crazy like generational talents or anything like that because you know, that's that's what I'm interested in seeing. But like I said, the Red Sox. He's a generational talent. Oh man. So he went 8 picks before us. So a good distance before us, but All right, there it is. So the season's over and we finished three games above the Dodgers and it did get a little interesting towards the end of the season because we got swept by the Dodgers right here, which brought the standings pretty close. I think it was one game and then we won three. I think that's how it ended. That or after they swept us, they were only two games behind. Either way, we finished on top of the West. League leaders wise, Robert Suarez had the most saves, which is awesome to see. Did I just see Vladdy? on the nationals okay interesting and then if we take a look at awards really quickly we've got two gold glove winners lately i've been noticing silver sluggers haven't been getting announced so i'm just gonna see if we quickly have one which it doesn't look like we do okay so if we take a look at awards as a whole vladdy ended up winning mvp along with aaron judge juan soto's with the guardians okay we'll keep that in mind scooble and glasnow are the Cy Young winners. Dylan Cease were in, was in the mix, so that's good to see. If we take a look at relievers of the years, Jimmy Ro or Jimmy Rodriguez. Who is Jimmy Rodriguez? Jimmy Garcia and Jeff Hoffman are the relievers of the year. Keegan Thompson once again in the mix. 
I have never seen Keegan Thompson ever do this in a rebuild. What is going on with this? Uh, we've got Robert Lopez, who was with the Yankees. B potential, 78 overall. Okay, who's this? Interesting. Travis Bazan is now with the Angels. And then Drew Gilbert is now with the Orioles. And then Cleveland Bush Gang. Wait, hold on. Bush, Bushang? Bush, Bush, Bush Chang? He looks good. Whoever this is, he looks insane. <laughs> Hold on. Who is this? Is this a real person? It can't be. It's not. Okay. All right. I just had to make sure. But holy cow, he looks unbelievable. How did I miss on this guy in the draft? He must have went before us if he, he's on the, Mar uh, the Marlins. Yeah. All right. So just kind of looking at the team as a whole, Severino did struggle a little bit this year. So we moved him to the long relief spot. Waldron now has B potential. That's actually huge. I might be able to sneak another season out of him. He was actually decent. Sub so 4 ERA. I'll take that. Yuki Matsui. Pretty good season from him as well. Not as good as last year, but I'll take it for sure. Estrada struggled this year, which was a little bit of a letdown. A couple guys in our bullpen did. As you can see, there's no Jorge Lopez. I ended up sending him down. He was claimed by the Yankees or the Mets. It just said by New York. And I didn't really know which New York. So there's that. So we were down a pitcher. And I turned to Soroka in September. He got lit up. I turned to Brian uh, Brian Hoeing, he got lit up, and then I turned to Jake Brents, he got lit up. So the, the bullpen situation got a little dicey towards the end of the year. Maury Hone was pretty solid, he also went up to be potential, and then we're going to call up Cosgrove, hopefully he can help us out this postseason. Jason Adam is a free agent, he's been very good as the setup guy, and Robert Suarez is regressing, which sucks, because again, pretty solid. but. Another eight blown saves, not ideal. And we still have one more season of him. So we're gonna have to figure something out there. Cease, really good. Love to see it, 20 and six on the year. Great ERA, great whip. Bueller continues to do well. Probably not gonna develop too much more. We've got one more year of him. I think we can definitely get a good season from him. Super consistent so far. Michael King, there we go. I might take that option now. 16 mil is, is a little bit. But I might I might take that option. And then Brian, oh, Brian Bayo for 9 mil. What was the contract? 9.2 mil. The steal of the season. Lineup wise, catchers, not great. Campusano wasn't amazing. Trevino wasn't either. And you're probably like, well, why didn't you turn to Ethan Salas? Trevino had like a 260 average heading into September. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just see what Ethan Salas can do. I unfortunately didn't add him to the 40 man until September, so he's not eligible for the postseason roster. But yeah, in September, he came up and was like, that's my job. So next year, Ethan Salas will be our catcher. But for now, Jose Trevino will have to be our catcher. And also, Rob Rapschneider was our first baseman against lefties, and he was unbelievable. So give it up for Rob Rapschneider. I wasn't expecting that. But if we talk about the team as a whole, Ryan Noda, again, off the bench. I'm perfectly fine with those numbers. That's a pretty good average on base percentage and OPS. Ref Schneider, we've already talked about, had a crazy season. Ramon Urias, last minute in addition to the team. The average and the on base percentage are just fine. OPS, whatever. He's a one and done for our team. Eggy, just can't do it. Just can't do much. And then back to the pitchers. If we take a look at our starters, Tatis had a good season. Ended up being a leadoff guy for a little bit. Profar took over for a rise at the DH spot and hit 30 home runs. I mean, what's the war as a full full time DH? 2.2. I mean, I'll take that. I'll take that for sure. We've got Robert, who at least the OPS was close to 800, and he had 34 home runs. So I'll, I'll take that for sure. He's up to a 92. Machado is starting to regress a little bit, not too much, but he's still putting up some good numbers. Jackson Merrill is our next superstar. We've got Bichette, a potential, huh? This, this might be, I might have to extend his contract after this year if he's going to be our guy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he looks pretty good. We've already talked about Trevino. Wasn't great. Cronenworth, he might be someone that I look to replace at first base. I just don't know who. We don't necessarily have anybody that plays first base besides Noda. So I guess we could turn to Noda if need be. And then Hassan Kim, we did re-sign him, uh, like, to start this season. And he showed up with a, a really good year 25 home runs 16 stolen bases almost a 380 on base percentage i mean that's huge that's huge i might even do that for the postseason either way it is postseason time against the cubs and we ah, losing the second game not ideal hey yeah what is what is going on here i, I have to turn to dylan c's here 
sorry Bayo, but it's got to be Cease. He ends up winning, and instead of Bayo, I mean may maybe it is Bayo because of the other guys, and we lose three to one. I mean we we can't expect to win a game scoring one run. So we did that twice in the series. That's super disappointing. Offense let me down big time. Who didn't show up? Robert, Cronenworth, 0 for 8. I mean, yeah, that's the season. Who ends up winning the Phillies? Is that back to back for the Phillies? Is that back to back for the Phillies? It is. It is. All right, we, we need to step up our game. Is it the pitching? Is it the offense? Are we just getting unlucky? What's going on here? We need to figure that out. Either way, exclusive negotiations time decline that i'm not bringing him back looking at the rest of the team soroka probably wants like too much and as much as i'm like yeah he can be our long reliever no thank you morihone i'm gonna try to bring back for a season at least you know what we'll do two years nine mil i'm okay with that offer jason adams on that on that weird spot where he just might regress or he's gonna be really good for another season or two how much does he want? He doesn't want a lot. Ooh, this is so tough. I'm gonna go 4.5. Trevino can go, Severino can walk. Bo Bichette definitely taking that eight and a half million option. Profar, again, I, I don't I don't really know. He's on that weird, that cusp where it's like he could be really good or could be really bad. He might be a last minute decision. And Michael King, Michael King, I'm gonna decline. That's our off season. Alrighty, before we start free agency, or actually I should say, before we actually get into season three, you can kind of see I'm targeting a lot of relievers. I just want to make sure we have some depth because one, we haven't been drafting a lot of pitchers that have been like high rated. So talent wise, we don't have a lot. We don't, we just don't. We have like Cash Mayfield, maybe Charles Floyd, maybe Katimer. Like there, there's not a lot of talent going on in the farm system with pitching. And realistically, Walker Bueller and Matt Waldron could just be like one more season and that's it especially because Walker Bueller's contract expires after this next season. I'm not bringing back Michael King, even though I can get him cheaper than 15 mil, just because I'm like, he hasn't been amazing. I know he'll probably sign with a new team and do really well, but I just feel like at this point, maybe we just go out and get somebody different and see how that goes. Could I go get Scooble? Sure. Could I get Peralta? Sure. But again, I don't necessarily have the craziest amount of money. I've only got 40 mil to spend. So I've been looking around the league, seeing players with expiring contracts or like one more year on their contract and because we've been drafting so well with our position players i'm actually okay with trading some of those prospects away to acquire pitching talent matt manning's the first one more year left on arbitration and then becomes a free agent he's been extremely consistent during this rebuild i feel like he could be a guy that could slide in at the three four or five spot in the rotation and be pretty good tigers aren't that good they didn't make the postseason last year they could try to cash in while they can Pablo Lopez, another guy whose contract expires at the end of the season, has been fairly consistent as well. A little bit older, but the Twins did make the postseason next last season, so I don't really know if they would want to trade away Pablo Lopez. And then the final one is Christian Javier, who is coming off of a worse year than the previous season, but again, expiring contract. But also, Astros don't really have the pitching depth to like really lose anybody, and they were in the postseason last year. They still got a pretty strong team. I don't think they'd want to trade Christian Javier. So after all that, it just kind of seems like Matt Manning makes the most sense. And they actually, all three of those pitchers basically required the same trade. And that's going to be, where is he? Santiago Tejada, a potential 58 overall, and then a pitching prospect, really any of them. And I'm okay getting rid of one pitching prospect because we're going to get a pretty decent pitcher in return. And for this one, I'm going to give up Domingo Tapia. And I'm okay with this because... Charles Floyd looks basically like Tapia. Same per nine, just a little bit better rated. So, and more potential. I like this trade. We're going to take Matt Manning. All right. So, starting the season, season three, and budget-wise, we're, we're in a little bit of a pickle. And the reason why is because I brought in Patrick Sandoval, 12 mil for three years. I figured, let's, let's see what we can do here. He hovered around a four ERA, which is kind of what Michael King was giving us. And... He's a year younger than Michael King. So let's let's just see what happens. I've seen him get really good in franchise where he's been a Cy Young contender. So maybe we can turn things around with him. Bo Bichette has been extended for 9.3 mil for the rest of the rebuild. I thought that was a pretty good deal for how much, you know, he's been he's been decent, right? And for 9 mil for a starting second baseman or shortstop, 
I think I think that's fine. I think that'll be perfectly fine. He's got eight potential, so he's still got plenty of room to grow. And then Matt Manning was willing to accept eight mil a season for the next three seasons, basically the whole rebuild to be another starter for us. So, I mean, I got a couple extensions done. Now I got to figure out what I want to do with the rest of the money or how I'm going to open up a little bit of money. And I think Jake Cronenworth is on the way out. It looks like he goes every other. So maybe this year will be a really good year for him. But at the same time, this contract is just it's just it just can't happen it just can't happen even if he hits 30 home runs again i just know the season after i'm just not gonna be able to use him so i'm gonna trade him now i know his value is low but i'm just gonna go to the tigers they have a, a first base like backup that i can take and hayden mcgeary who's a cup prospect in real life but we're just gonna take this straight up and make the deal after the trade i also did you know forget to mention robert did get an extension as you can see so that was another reason why budget was a little tight we had to work around it but this is the team nota hops in here mcgeary on the bench this is what we're gonna have bench looks okay lineup's basically the same just nota instead of cronenworth oh profar is back he was just one of the ones that i could afford for six and a half mil it's not too bad pitching wise you can kind of see this is what we're rocking i don't think it looks bad i'm a little worried about the bullpen estrada wasn't amazing last year bryce wilson has come in for a season i think like two and a half mil two mil suarez potentially could be an issue just because of the age right we didn't bring back jason adam he was also like 35 36 and like leo dicaprio once you hit a certain age you got to move on so alcala b potential he he went from c to b because he was a free agent and as you can see some with the phillies had a good year got b potential so i thought okay let's let's see if we can keep him for a season or two and then this is our bullpen in AAA. added a couple guys to have a little bit of depth along with brad keller so there we go. That's the team. I feel good about it. Like I said, budget could be an issue moving forward. We haven't drafted poorly, but we also just haven't found anybody that's like really, really good. Like we do have Salas, who was already part of the farm system. We do have Lucero, who was getting his call up now. We also have Chin, who could potentially get called up fairly soon. And Eaton, who's also part of the MLB lineup now. But again, no, no one that's been like crazy that's hopped into the team yet. So we'll see what happens. Missing out on this guy really sucks, the generational talent. And there's been a couple others that I've missed out on that I didn't realize were like that good hitting at the time. I've also been trying to just draft different players than what I normally would do, where I'm not always drafting the James Chins, you know, the outfielders that have crazy hitting, but really bad fielding. Or like, you know, I've, I've been trying to switch up the draft picks, draft less pitchers, draft more position players, and sometimes they just are a little bit lower rated so we'll see what happens let's get through season three all right so we're in the postseason we're taking on the brewers or the braves as you can see the athletics made the postseason which is crazy but they had a unbelievable offseason and this is probably one of the better teams i've seen them assemble in a rebuild they've got like jared kelnick on the bench you've got crochet who they just signed ken caminiti they traded for mizoroski they traded for they traded away mason miller which was crazy to see but they've just kind of done really well. Signed Nico Horner, signed Jake Fraley, signed Jazz, acquired Cam Smith and Ivan Melendez. Like, hey, and they made the postseason because of it. Looking at our league leaders, though, let's see what we got here. Bueller with wins, Cease with innings pitched. Okay. And awards just won a Cy Young. So William Contreras ended up winning MVP. Brent Rooker of the A's won MVP. Okay. Part of the reason probably they made the postseason. Flaherty in the Cy Young or is the Cy Young winner Pablo Lopez okay and Garrett Crochet I mean the A's just made all the right moves this offseason Dylan Cease won it for us obviously Contreras and Tristan Casas batting title winners Paul Seawald and Mason Miller were your relievers of the year you can see Robert Suarez was part of the part of the race as well which is good to see in his last year of his contract and then James Triantos Ethan Salas and Gray Eaton Triantos just beat out Salas and Eaton which is a little disappointing and I think Eaton would have won it if he played a full season because Triantos had what 500 ABs 480 for Salas 340 for Eaton so there's that and then Ivan Melendez of the A's won rookie of the year so really quickly seeing those two snowflakes is not ideal um these two are pretty close to being MLB ready Cash Mayfield and Charles Floyd I mean they look great both lefties could easily hop into the rotation Let's talk about it. So Waldron, he was good. Again, he's slightly improving. I don't know how much more he's going to. So let's just kind of keep going until he sucks. It's really where I'm at with him. 
Matsui was good. We've got one more season of him. Estrada was good. Good bounce back year from last season. Morihone was fantastic. Again, we also have one more season of him. Bryce Wilson was a one and done. Honestly, I might bring him back. I might. If he wants around like two, three, maybe four mil, I'm in. That's a good season from him. Alcala, really good setup guy. And then Suarez, this was the last year of his deal, which is great because I, I can't keep him around anymore. He, he was good though. He was good. Starters, Cy Young winner, Dylan Cease, really good season from him. Bueller, also a very, very good season from him. 20 and eight on the year. I don't know what to do with him. Like, do we just turn to Cash Mayfield? I feel like it's not a terrible move, right? We have Matt Manning, who also put up a good year. A little high on the ERA and whip, but overall, not bad. Brian Bayo gave us two just over three ERA seasons. Like, we picked him up. This might be the this might be the move of the, the rebuild right here. Crazy. And then Sandoval sucked, which his, his season looks way worse than it actually was. He was hovering around like a four ERA. So I don't know what happened the last like month and a half where he just got shelled. So... There's that. What's the FIP looking like? A 4-1. So, like, like, see what I'm saying? So, like, he kind of was around that 4 ERA. So, something towards the end of the season just really didn't click. Lineup-wise, Campusano is just going to be our backup catcher. That's that's just his role moving forward. Hayden McGarry was not bad. 14 ABs, though. So, like, we'll see. Gary Eaton. Or Gray. I keep saying Gary. It's Gray. Gray Eaton. Ugh. 25 years old. I mean, this is this is a great year. I don't know if he's a guy that I can start versus righties. I think he's definitely just a lefty hitter, but I'm okay with that. The numbers are great. Devin Lucero, another rookie on the season, only got five ABs, so can't really can't really say much about that. And then Eggy Rosario was pretty bad, so yeah. Uh, Jackson Morrow was our leadoff hitter, and he still put up similar numbers. It's just. You know, because he had more ABs as a leadoff guy, the average dipped, the on-base percentage dipped, the OPS dipped, you know, things like that. But hits around the same, doubles, home runs, triples, you know, it, it's a basically what he's typically doing. He just had more ABs this season. Tatis had a down year, still a fairly good season. Robert had one of his best seasons recently. I mean, I'll take that with the on-base percentage and the average going up. We've got Machado, who's still slowly regressing. And by slowly, I mean that minus 12 is a little worrying. But still a pretty good season. I'll take it for sure. Profar gave us 27 home runs and a, a good year. I don't think I could bring him back, but this will probably be an area I'm looking to improve. That DH versus righties. Because we don't really have a guy that I feel too comfortable with yet. Even in the minor leagues, I really don't have one. Leo Dallas DeVry, though, tore it up in AA and AAA this year. So he's right on the cusp of getting called up. It's just we have Hassan Kim right now, who is still hitting fairly well. We've got one more year on his deal. Let's just ride it out with him at shortstop. Ryan Noda took over first base, and honestly, not bad. Not bad at all. I'll take those numbers, right? Like, that's not bad at all. Bichette, again, not amazing numbers, but like 280 with a 340 on base percentage. I'll take that all day, especially for someone who's making under 10 mil. And then Ethan Salas, 14 home runs. It's not bad. It's not great, but still at 20 years old, putting up those numbers behind the plate, I'm okay with that. And we're going to rock with this for the postseason. So let's see how we do. We're taking on the Braves, or Braves, the Brewers. Whoops, and we are through. Oh, boy. Yes, okay. Hoo, 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 hoo. Okay, taking on the Reds. The Reds beat the Diamondbacks. Okay, so let's, let's go take a look really quickly because I don't really know what the Reds have done. Let's see here. Kenny Griffin was the guy from the first year draft, which he looks unbelievable. Moises Ballesteros is okay. Is a red now. Marcelo Myers a red now. Okay. Okay. Pitching wise, Nestor Cortez is new. Bo Brisky. Okay. So some new names for sure, but it's still a lot of like prospects that the, the Reds currently have. Chase Burns is also in the majors now. Who's got game one? Dylan Cease. Perfect. So let's do this. Hunter Green versus Cease. That's a tough loss. Bryce Wilson. Thank you for that. Uh, but Bueller gets us back on track with a 1-1 one, one series. Win at 8-2. Two to two. All right, please, Dylan Cease. I need the win here. <laughs> we can't keep going like the full series. We can't keep doing that. We're facing the Astros now. And I think, I mean, our pitchers are really letting us down here. Holy cow. We are looking bad. What is going on here? It's, it's our starters. Like the bullpen looks like they're doing fine. The offense, for the most part, looks like it's doing pretty well. It's just our starters are really hurting us. 
looking at the team, I was looking at Jeremy Pena because he does become a free agent. He has been pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, but looking at the rest of their team, Nolan Shanuel's on the team now. Okay. Corbin Burns. How did Javier do this season? Okay. Not bad. Not bad. All right. I feel like it's going to come down to can our starters not suck? I don't want Patrick Sandoval pitching. I don't want Patrick Sandoval pitching. So yeah. Can our starters not suck? So here we go. Game one, we win five to two. Game two, we win seven to four. Seven nothing is a tough loss there. So is that. Patrick Sandoval, 3-2. It comes down to Dylan Cease versus Hunter Brown. And a World Series is R with a R's with a 2-1 victory. I like that a lot. Jurex and Profar, World Series MVP. Ethan Salas, playoff MVP. Ryan Noda with 16 RBIs over the postseason. I mean, we played like 40 games in the postseason, but still, I like I like those three as our leaders. Offensively, it looks like for the most part, everybody did well like everyone's hitting close to like 270 and above i mean machado like robert was close to 270 but machado really was the lowest one i'll take that all day but again it was the starters kind of let us down kind of let us down like you can't have a seven and a half can't have almost a five but i guess these three kind of at sandoval for a bad regular season coming in and give us 20 innings of three and a half era with the sub one whip that's great world series in the books in season three Heading into the final two seasons, I feel like now we just try to slightly upgrade in a couple spots, which shouldn't be too difficult. I mean, like, also, we should have, like, a little bit of money. We have more than what we did last year, so that's already a good start. So I'm looking at this. I think, yeah, let's bring, oh, wow, he wants less than a mil. I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. I'll bump it up to two and a half for two years. Should get him there. Brad Keller can go. Profar can go. And I'm going to hold off on Walker Bueller. Feel like basically from here on out, like we're set. So what we could do, Cash Mayfield could slot in the five. I do like Waldron here in this like long relief role. Bullpen looks pretty good besides a closer, which we kind of could turn to like Gustafson. I don't know about these two guys who have signed in free agency. We also do have Hoeing. We have Cosgrove. We have Kolick. Reese Priest has been developing slightly. So we've got a couple guys that we could turn to in relief. That's already on the team or in the organization but we could also spend some money and then starter wise cash field may be ready he might be ready just to slide in at that five spot which i'm not against and then realistically it's just let's get a guy who can hit and take over that dh spot which i mean let's let's see what's available really quickly he's available let's see anybody else anybody else um J Ram for a season, I wouldn't be against. I don't know if he's going to do well, but I wouldn't be against it. Paredes, McMahon. Mm. Okay, so not as many as I was hoping. Not as many good bats as I was hoping. Okay. I mean, we do have trade pieces, so I'm not like too against that. There's definitely some bullpen arms. Okay. We'll see. Alrighty, season four coming off of a World Series. What did I do? Not much. Uh, let's talk about the team. Cash Mayfield is our fifth starter yeah bullpen i did i did upgrade a position overall wise andres munoz is our new closer three years seven mil coming off of a pretty good year as a closer last year i tried to get felix bautista he went back to the orioles um man he uh i gave him three years and a pretty comparable salary maybe maybe a little less and maybe he wanted the extra year i think i was so that's probably what 12 and a half mil ish per year i was probably at like 12 so he probably just got more money and the, the extra year and that's what sold it for him going back to the orioles which unfortunate is unfortunate but we didn't get him so instead we turned our attention to andres munoz and he is our new closer so he's been pretty good the last two years so hopefully he can continue that and then the bullpen's basically the same farm system a lot of guys on waivers right now so don't freak out i've got pitchers we're good there lineup wise i was gonna call him up i was gonna move machado to dh but then i was like you know what let's let him develop one more season he's still only 21 and then next year he can take over for hasan kim and we'll go from there lineup though like actual mlb lineup this is what we're gonna rock with moncada is a new addition six and a half mil had a decent season last year with the mariners and I was like, you know what? Six and a half mil to be a bench bat for us could 
potentially take over DH if need be. We'll have to wait and see because I brought in Marcelo Zuna and I was like, you know what? I don't really like the move, but I was looking for other bats that were available. And Brent Rooker wanted four years. If I didn't offer him four years, he wasn't signing with us. And also, I had to offer him a lot of money. And he went back to the athletics, if I'm correct. I think he went back to the athletics because I tried to match with the athletics gave him. Yeah, it was four years. What's that? 14 mil. Honestly, it's not a bad contract. It's really not considering he hit 43 home runs and 130 RBIs last year. It's not a bad contract at all. I was just worried financially moving forward that we wouldn't have the money to really make any other adjustments if need be. So I just signed a guy for one year, seven mil. I don't expect him to last the full season. I'm really just banking on him giving us like half a season. If he lasts the full season and hits like 30 home runs, great. If not, I do think we have other positions and other players that can step in if need be. Um, Ryan Noda, I extended him for the rest of the rebuild for five mil. And either, even if he ends up on the bench, he's been good for us. So I think this is a, a pretty good pickup for us. And then that's the rest of the team. I like it. I took Jackson Merrill out of the leadoff spot. Hopefully he can bounce back after last year. And that's it. I mean, again, I didn't really do too much. We're, we're still kind of hovering around our cap for salary so or our budget. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to play it smart, not go too crazy. Let's see how the season goes. Okay, so season's over. We finished with 101 wins, nine games above the Diamondbacks. We will be taking on... Oh, the Reds are good, huh? We're going to take on the Phillies or the Cubs. Okay, league leaders. Dylan C said the best war. No awards. Okay, so Bryce Harper, MVP, along with your Don. Shea Langliers was in the mix there on the AL side. All right, Drew Rasmussen. Okay, Drew Rasmussen, huh? Tristan McKenzie's with the Blue Jays. Okay, Nick Lodolo's with the Mariners. Some changes there. Shane McClanahan with the Mets won the Cy Young on the NL side. Contreras, Endeavors, batting title winners. Reliever of the year went to Nick Sandlin, who I think they signed for like four mil. Five and a half mil. I could have picked him up. I also could have picked up Griffin Jacks. Keegan Thompson is again reliever of the year. Good lord. Almost 70 saves. He was available this offseason. I was like, you know what? He's he's regressing. I don't want to pick him up. And of course, of course, he, he does well. Rookie of the year goes to Frank Hanna of the Brewers with 30 home runs. Cash Mayfield finished second. And John Gibbons, who is a first year draft pick. One rookie of the year for the Mariners. Okay, so let's talk about our team here. Hitching wise, the one guy that let me down this year was Yuki Matsui, who had a 5.3 ERA. Not great, not great. So with that in mind, you can see a couple guys have started to develop pretty well. Some guys are getting some chances, some guys aren't. I think this guy's gonna get called up next year. I don't know for who, but he's pretty close to being ready. So Matt Waldron, again, just really good in this long relief role. Pretty happy there. Matt Manning. A little worried about this. Uh, Jorge Alcala, ERA went up a little bit, but whips in a good spot, so I'm okay with that. Morihone continues to do well, but not really developing too much more. So he might be one of those guys that gets replaced this offseason. Tom Cosgrove came up from Yuki Matsui, gave us 14 innings or 13 innings, and it was pretty strong. Bryce Wilson starting to regress a little bit, but I'm still pretty happy with the, the season he put together. Estrada took over the setup role and was great. And then Andres Munoz is regressing, which is worrying, but he was good. So I'm pretty happy with those numbers. Cease is also regressing, which is not great, but he was he was good once again. I'm really happy with the numbers he put up. Sandoval put up a very good season. So a good bounce back year from last year. Bayo still putting up a good year. ERA did go up quite a bit, but I'm still pretty happy with him being like our four. And then Cash Mayfield as our five. Pretty strong. I'll, I'll take that for a rookie season. I can see that being... Uh, pretty good season. So we had we had a little issue. Ryan Noda forgot how to hit a baseball. I don't. <laughs> he is a bench guy. I think that's just what we've learned. He's got to be on the bench. He is that guy. He's got to be on the bench if we want him to succeed. Campusano had 50 abs and was pretty good. I'm happy with those numbers. Gray fell off a little bit average wise. On base percentage though, still pretty good. Uh, we saw Noda. We saw Eggy. Best season so far. He got 60 ABs, and then Moncada was decent in 70 ABs. I'm pretty happy with that. Starters, Tatis, 35 home runs, 100 RBIs. Good on base percentage, good OPS, pretty happy there. Robert, I'll take those numbers with 33 home runs. Ozuna, gave me a full season and still put up good numbers. I'm happy with that. One and done, though. He will not be coming back. 
Machado put up good numbers. I'm really happy with that. Power numbers are definitely dropping, and I don't think he'll be a starter next year, but he'll definitely be on the team. Hassan Kim, last season, I think I'm going to let him walk. We've got Leo Dallas DeVry, who did get some time in September, and he was okay, right? Like, those aren't terrible numbers, but I'm just looking at him as a whole. Plus nine for power versus righties. Some good growth all across the board. I definitely think he's a guy that will play a shortstop for us next year. There's that. James Chin could potentially help us out off the bench. Lucero could also potentially help us out off the bench. I've had this guy for like, what, four seasons now? I don't, I don't really know what to do with him. And uh, I, I'm trying to see if anybody else really developed. Maybe Quinones? Maybe? I don't know. I, I feel like... I feel like our lineup's pretty strong, right? Like Jackson Merrill is regressing, which sucks because like he was good. And now he's just like, I, I guess this is just what we're going to get from him. Is that is that what I'm, I'm looking at here? 24 homers, mid 30s to high 30s doubles. That's that's the Jackson Merrill right there. Hayden McGeary to go over for Noda. And to be honest, the slugging's a little low, but not bad. Not bad. Bo Bichette continues to just be solid right like he's nothing crazy but he's putting up good numbers and then ethan salas had the best season of his career by far so a mixed bag i would say i like some of it and then i don't like some of it i definitely think we need to upgrade the offense i definitely think we'll have the money to do that it's just i gotta get a little bit lucky in free agency so with that being said let's get to the postseason and not get eliminated boom that's a good start now the reds this is probably the toughest opponent we're gonna have and we are those are two tough losses there. But Dylan Cease puts us within one game of the World Series. And it comes down to Bayo versus Chase Petty. And we fall short. Like I said, the Reds are probably going to be a tough team. And when we score one run, allow 12, allow 7, only score 2 here, can't really expect to win. So it's going to be the Battle of Ohio for the World Series. Who's going to come out on top? It is going to be Cleveland. All right. I know what I need to do. Bolster pitching a little bit bolster the offense a little bit looking at our exclusive negotiations 12 mil is not bad right i just don't know how much more he's going to improve and realistically let's just try to get as much money as possible so i am going to let's see here we'll go five for morihone alcala i'm going to hold off on Mokada, if he wants like too much he wants too much and hasan kim wants too much so I'm only going to offer Morihon five staff. I need a manager. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll wait on that. Let's, let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. We are going into the final season looking for potentially a pitcher, potentially a pitcher, some bullpen for sure. And ooh, okay. A shortstop, which is DeVry. So I think a big bat, a big pitcher. Final season, final big move. I need a pitcher. And that pitcher is going to be Bailey Ober. I know he's not really progressing. He's not also regressing. Contract, 20 mil. It's not too bad. And he's been pretty good throughout the entire rebuild. A potential still. Probably could hit 90, 33 years old. I'm okay making the trade. We're going to get rid of Martin Villanueva, who we drafted in season two, season one. I can't remember now, but never really cracked team as you can see we got this catcher here willie fabregas who i believe i drafted in season three didn't show you the draft basically seasons three four have been pretty bad draft wise but here we go willie fabregas and then tom cadmer who i believe was season one all right so i'm about to hit arbitration hearings basically the end of the off season i saw gunner henderson was still available and then i saw he was 87 overall this is the heaviest regression i have seen gunner henderson hit ever and he's not even having bad years like almost 40 home runs the last two seasons 30 home runs last year he's been good he's just getting hit heavy so he's probably going back to the orioles i i don't need him in the team i'm just trying to fill out the rest of my minor league squads make sure we got enough pitchers extra players you know, you know the deal making sure we got everybody but i saw that i was flabbergasted gunner henderson's down to an 87 already that is crazy. All right, so final season, we're ranked first. Good defense, good speed, good contact power, and pitching. Now let's talk about the team. So Cease, Ober, Manning, Bayo, and Cash Mayfield. We've got, where is he? Charles Floyd, 
waiting for his opportunity along with a couple others but it's mostly charles floyd that could potentially come up be a long reliever maybe be fifth in the rotation got a couple relievers got a couple on waivers as well so we'll be fine with the uh, minor league squads waldron long relief and then our bullpen currently looks like this a couple new names ryan weathers looks great thought we could use another lefty wasn't too expensive either at five mil but he's been pretty good for the marlins for the last couple seasons so i thought you know what let's pick him up trevor steven been with the white Sox the last couple seasons has been unbelievable for them picked them up for six and a half mil and then dustin may has been pretty good for the dodgers for the last two seasons as a long reliever but i figured let's throw him in the middle section of our bullpen and rock with it there and then we're just gonna have the the estrada and muñoz as the setup in the closer i don't know why i stuttered so much on that part but lineup couple changes couple new guys we're gonna have lucero back up we're gonna have noda eaton eggy and campusano james chin is gonna take over at second base better fielding than bichette and also some decent contact numbers let's see how he can do as our leadoff hitter Tristan casas is the big boy addition this year and then we also have leo dallas devry making his debut so a lot of prospects that we drafted as part of the team we got a couple prospects from the original squad in salas mayfield and devry i'm liking this team that we put together we've already had one world series we've been close other seasons as well let's finish it off with one more title let's go win it so we finished a season high and this might be a rebuild high actually 105 and 57 i say season high because i don't think a team even came close to us yeah they there was only one of two other 90 win teams everybody was under that i mean we ran away with the league easily the best on paper league leader wise bailey over had the best winning percentage and the most wins so it could be a pretty good pickup there and then jackson merrill led the league in home runs Tristan casas had the most walks and jackson merrill had the best slugging percentage okay interesting i wasn't expecting that so what awards do we have because we had some crazy performances this season we have a cy young okay so that's what our third or our second Cy Young this rebuild. We have a rookie of the year and an MVP for Jackson Merrill. Okay, I will take that. Jackson Merrill, MVP 380 on base percentage, 1,000 OPS, double digit triples. All right, three time All Star, 2029 Silver Slugger, 2029 Home Run Champ, 2029 MVP for Jackson Merrill. What a way to end the rebuild, getting him an MVP. On the other side, it was Jordan Alvarez. Grayson Rodriguez was Cy Young along with Bailey Ober. What a pickup for us. This guy. I don't think I highlighted this guy. I think this guy was season two draft. And he was like an 81 when they drafted him. I think his potential was like 87. But he was an 81 overall when the Mets drafted him. Unbelievable stuff. Uh, Francisco Alvarez just beat out. Actually, he beat out Jackson Merrill by quite a bit for the batting title. Kerry Carpenter won it on the other side. Two White Sox fighting out for that uh, batting title. Nick Sandlin won Reliever of the Year along with Alex Vessia. And then Rookie of the Year went to Leah Dallas DeVry and Jack Caglione. All right, so our pitching rotation currently looks like this. As you can see, Cash Mayfield is going to move to that long relief spot. He wasn't bad. He wasn't bad at all. Pretty similar to what he did last year in terms of ERA and whip. So I'll take it. He, he's good. He's still 24, 82 overall. Pretty solid arm. Matt Waldron surprised me throughout this entire rebuild. Super consistent. Super reliable. Really like him as a long reliever. Could have done it as a starter too, but I just felt like we can mix it up, make him a long reliever. Felt pretty good about that. Morihone brought him back. Had his best season by far. Ryan Weathers came in, gave us a 2 ERA. Gustafson came up for Estrada. Only got 5 innings in September but was lights out. Estrada wasn't bad. I think he had like a four. Eh, okay. ERA is a little high. He definitely did struggle a little bit. I also did give Reese an opportunity in the majors. Not bad. Not bad. So we do have some reliable arms there. Charles Floyd also got some time in the major leagues. Not a terrible first debut. And then we've got Dustin May with a 2.88 ERA. Trevor Steven with a 3.4 ERA. And then Andres Munoz is regressing, but still really, really strong season. So bullpen lockdown. Matt Waldron was an all-star last year along with Cash Mayfield. And then I was looking to see if we had any other award winners in the bullpen. 
and Andres Munoz was an all-star this year. Dylan Cease, we are obviously know, won the Cy Young with us in 2027. That was also his last all-star appearance. So a couple seasons ago, but he's still been fantastic at the top of our rotation. Bailey Ober, Cy Young winner, first year with us. I will take that sub three ERA. Matt Manning, bounce back season, huge. And then Brian Bayo, what do we got here? A gold glove last season, but again, pretty reliable for a really cheap pitcher. I'm actually pretty happy with that pickup that we did pretty early on in the rebuild. This is our offense. As you can see, Machado got moved to a bench roll. At one point, he had like a 240 average, had to take him out. He did pick it up off the bench, like numbers went up a little bit, but I just couldn't have him starting anymore. I mean, he's got the gold gloves, the silver sluggers, a couple all-star appearances throughout this rebuild. Campusano, not bad. I mean, backup catcher, what do you expect? Sadly, Ryan Noda fell off. He was doing so well this season. He had like a 280 average and then like August came around and he just fell off and it sucks because he was doing so well. I thought he was going to be that that pickup for us that just did well off the bench. Just didn't work out this season. Gray Eaton had a good year off the bench with 240 ABs. I mean, that's a great season for him. We got Hayden McGeary. who's going to take over for Noda and then Eggy Rosario continues to be a good bench bat these last two seasons. This is our lineup for the final year, that final playoff run. James Chin was our leadoff guy, got on base. That's what I need. I'm not looking for power, just get on base. Up to a 78 overall, looks pretty decent. Tatis still putting up 30 home runs, putting up a 300 average with a 907 OPS. Awards wise, we can see a couple gold gloves, a couple silver sluggers, a couple all-star appearances. Love it, huge for us. Tristan Casas, not as good as previous seasons, but more of like his career average, just short of 30 home runs, good amount of RBIs. Any award this year, Silver Slugger and an All-Star, I will take that. Luis Robert, I'm not going to lie, a little underwhelming, but he hit 30 home runs every season besides the first year. So I'm really happy with that. Gold Glove winner, that was it. Uh, okay. Jackson Merrill, MVP winner, huge for us. Devin Lucero got his debut fully after Machado got taken out of the lineup. He was good. He was really good. Plus 12 versus lefties. I mean, that's a crazy, crazy growth. And then Ethan Salas, 90 overall. His award was the playoff MVP in 2027 and an all-star this year with 20 home runs, 41 doubles, 12 stolen bases. I mean, that's a great season for a catcher. And then Boba Shets up to a 90. Again, super underrated pick, super cheap pick, sub 10 mil, all-star this year. I'll take it. There we go. And then Rookie of the Year, Leo Dallas DeVry, 32 doubles, 23 home runs. Not the craziest like OPS or anything, but hey, Rookie of the Year, can't take that away from him. Alrighty, final playoff run, Cease versus Bieber. 14 to two. I mean, it didn't matter, but holy smokes, he gets the revenge, 12 to one on this one. And we are through to the World Series to take on the Rays or the Astros. It's gonna be the Astros. Let's go take a look at their team. Obviously, they're going to have Jordan. They've got JJ Blade, Jeremy Pena, Kyle Tucker, Shanuel. Okay. Bottom of the lineup looks pretty weak. Pitching looks looks okay. Looks okay. It's it's definitely not bad. Who do we have? Game one, Dylan Cease. How's the lineup looking? That, that's what you want to see at the top of your lineup for sure. Okay, Jackson Merrill, I need you to wake up. I need you to wake up. We can't be having that in the postseason. He is literally the only guy that is hitting under 280. That's kind of crazy to say. Dylan Cease obviously had that one bad start, but I'm, I'm okay with that. The bullpen out here not looking great, but we, we, we definitely need to hold it down here against the Astros. Game one, two to nothing. Game two, seven to two. Matt Manning wins it 10 to six. Can Brian Bayo wrap it up with a sweep? He can. Padres win two World Series of the last three years yes 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 in 2027 we did win that world series who was our mvp lou bob luis robert jr tristan casas was the playoff mvp i mean look at look at the playoffs holy smokes unbelievable from our team obviously we'll take a quick look once again dylan cease bounced back after that first outing and hey i will take that talk about a squad that we put together and this was the first year that I went over budget. Every other year, I stayed under budget. 
which was crazy thinking about the big contracts that we had. James Chin, what a leadoff guy. He is a better version of a rise, getting on base, high average, and can field Tatis, Casas, Luis Robert. I almost said, I don't, I, did I say Bob Robert? I almost said Bob Robert. I think that's what I was going for. Jackson Barrow picked it up a little bit, but still pretty disappointing in the World Series. Lucero cooled off in the World Series. Salas was solid. He's up to a 90 overall. Bo Bichette and DeVry. I mean, this team, what a crazy team we put together, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content. And if you're looking for some more, check out this one on screen now. I definitely think you'll like it. Catch you in the next one. Peace.